Okay, I'll, do this that, is Tom? Dylan's going to do it. This is Dylan. I'll, I'll take roll. Um, I was trying to capture people as I see them in the chat, but I didn't get through it far enough. So I'm just going to read off the community and whoever's from here from that community, just tell me who's here. Uh, so we'll start with Altoona. Present, Vern Willie. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ankeny, I saw David Jones on there. Gary's here also. Gary, thank you. Yep. Von Durant. Uh, Carlisle, I know Ruth's on. Yep, I'm here. Clive. Here, Ted Weaver. Thank you, Ted. Uh, Coming. Dallas County. Mark Hansen. Thank you, Mark. Dart, I saw Elizabeth join. I'm here, Elizabeth. Yeah, thank you. Um, Des Moines, I see um, Joe and Chris, you're here, obviously. Uh, anyone else from Des Moines? Bill Gray. Uh, Carl Voss. Bill Gray and Carl Voss, thank you. Stop. Stop. I said stop. Uh, Elkhart? <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Uh, Indianola? Johnston? Addison County? Lenners here. Thank you. Mitchellville? Norwalk? Tom Phillips is here. Uh, Pleasant Hill. Mark Conrad's here. Polk City. Jeff Walters here. Uh, Polk County. Um, Matt couldn't make it, I know. Okay. Urbandale. Van Meter. Warren County. Waukee. Courtney Clark is here. Thank you. West Des Moines. Jamie no. Lettering here. Thank you. I know Laura's on there as well. Okay. Windsor Heights. Joseph Jones. Yeah, it's not Joseph was on. Uh, Des Moines Airport. Iowa DOT. Yep, I'm here. Andy is. Thank you. And Herda. Is there anyone I did not call who is here? Scott Sanders is on. Scott is on for the mayor. Carl's on for Connie. Okay, thank you. And Scott Brennan's on as well, Dylan. Yes, thank you, Scott. Item number three is vote on the approval of agenda. Move. Second. A second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Item number four is vote on the approval of the meeting minutes for September 9th. Move Any discussion? Up. Gray moves. Second, Engelman. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Item number five is consent and vote and approval of financial statement. Todd. Yeah, that was included in your packet. Uh, not a lot of activity this uh, past month. Be happy to answer any questions. Would recommend approval. Any questions for Todd? Move approval. Second, Ruth. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Item number six is consent and vote on contracts and expenses. Yeah, Todd, you. you want to give us uh, a brief update on that? Yep, thank you. 
Um, we have three items for your approval under contract and expenses. Two of them are, are revenue um, generating uh, contracts and one is an expense. Uh, the first one, Melcher Dallas, um, uh, some of the work we're providing to, to our members, uh, um, doing some work for them. This is a managing a C CDBG grant that they received for some, some work down, down there. And so that we'll be paid $20,000 to manage that grant. The other uh, revenue is $10,000 for the watershed management MOU that we've had with Polk County uh, for the last several years. Uh, this um, was included in our 2021 budget, uh, things that we anticipated uh, having as revenue. Uh, so uh, nothing unusual with that one. The last item <laughs> is a, a, um, an expense of $40,000, which was budgeted in our, our work program um, for our smart cities initiative. It's a the Central Iowa Broadband Study, the Greater Des Moines Partnership is leading this effort, um, but what it'll essentially do is identify uh, where broadband is available in Central Iowa as well as the actual speeds that are available. Uh, sometimes operators say it's a certain speed, but it's actually much slower. Uh, so identifying that and then what gaps and what needs are, are needed uh, to improve the system, uh, you know, especially relevant now that most, a lot of people are uh, having their kids work and do school from home or people working from home, uh, how we, we make a more robust no network. I'd um, be happy to answer any additional questions, but we would recommend approval on those items. Uh, thank you. Any questions for Todd? Move to approve this route. Does the uh, broadband study encompass our whole service area? Yes, it, it actually goes uh, out through the SERPT area, but it includes all of the MPO area as well. Is, is SERPT going to do a prorated amount? Um, they're working with the counties to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, they're working with the counties for them to uh, contribute to the study as well. So essentially, yes, this is the sh short answer. Second, Willie. Any other discussions or questions? And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, this is the time in the meeting for any public comment on uh, any MPO action items. Um, Dylan, I don't know, is anybody on the line? Not that we're aware of. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. Okay. All right, item number eight is report and vote on excess TAP funding recommendations. Uh, Todd. Yes, thank you. Uh, much like uh, a few months ago, we had a discussion and an award for some excess STBG funds after reviewing available uh, TAP funding and kind of uh, going through our books, we determined there was $700,000 in available funding for TAP uh, awards. Um, uh, you may recall earlier this year, um, Hope County Conservation was looking to replace the Trestle to Trestle Trail Bridge. They had approached the MPO, uh, hoping we could contribute to that project. At the time, we didn't have any funding available. Uh, that bridge collapsed in 2019 due to the, the ice jams over Beaver Creek and is a key uh, a point of connection to a number of regional trails. Uh, so we worked with the uh, funding uh, the funding subcommittee to look at would it be possible to award some of that funding to that project as well as uh, any to a, any additional projects. Uh, that committee came up with a recommendation uh, to award the TAP funds to, to that project as well as um, four others. Go ahead to the next slide. So uh, taking that $400,000 or $700,000, we would award an additional 65 to the Ankeny or Labor Gateway Trail Project, 70,000 to the uh, B-Cycle locations in Clive, 100,000 to the Des Moines to Carlisle Trail, uh, 65,000 to the Central Place Levee Trail, and then 400,000 to the Trestle to Trestle Trail Bridge. By awarding the 400,000, that lets the Polk County Conservation Department leverage some other funds and construct that project next spring, as opposed to waiting a year or, or two uh, to reconstruct that bridge project. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions uh, and would recommend approval. 
Any questions for Todd? Move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I get who was Opposed. the second on that? Uh, oh. Hang on one second, Todd. I'll find out for you. Opposed? Yeah. Abstention, motion passes. Who did second it? Ted Weaver. Thanks, Thanks Ted. Ted. Item number nine is report and vote on 2021-2024 TIF amendment request. Shiroshi is gonna give us an update on that, I believe. Yes, thank you. Uh, so we have a TIF amendment request submitted to us by Polk County. The project in consideration is the Broadway Avenue Multimodal Improvement Project. This, um, this project just received a $25 million uh, build grant. And so essentially the amendment request from Polk County is to add this project to the federal fiscal year 2021 through 2024 tip. So uh, staff recommends approval to add the project. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer at this time. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Any questions? Uh, this is item number nine. It is a voting item. So if we don't have any questions, I'd entertain a motion. Move to approve. Ruth. Second, Weaver. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. <laughs> item number 10 is a report on the updated TAP scoring criteria. Uh, Shiroshi's going to give us an update on that. Yes, thank you. Um, so staff has been working on updating the scoring criteria that's used for um, looking at uh, TAP applications or the Transportation Alternative Program. And um, before I go into the specifics of the proposed update, um, I would like to give you a little bit of a background on what, why we are doing this right now. So uh, essentially there's three uh, big goals. Um, the, the primary goal is to match the scoring criteria to the long range transportation planning goals. The current scoring criteria that's used is uh, an old um, scoring criteria and hasn't been updated recently. We have, however, developed the long range transportation plan and have updated it. So we wanted to take a deeper look and make sure that the scoring criteria that we're using for TAP uh, applications matches with the long range transportation planning goals. The second um, goal was to refine and update the criteria itself and uh, reduce some of the subjectiveness and redundancies within the criteria. Right now we have uh, nine broad criteria, and we, we're proposing a few more to uh, make it more uh, detailed. Finally, um, we wanted to improve the process itself. Uh, we Right now we use a slightly longer process uh, for selecting and approving the projects. It's a two-step process with um, setting up a scoring committee every year to review the projects. With having a much more uh, detailed and objective scoring criteria, essentially we would be able to make the process um, a little bit more efficient and uh, cut on the time that's uh, required to move the process through. With that, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the existing criteria that, uh, that we use. So as I mentioned, we have nine broad criteria and they roughly fall under the three um, topics that you see here, multimodal aspects, system connectivity, and local support. With, the, with updating this, we are going to, we are proposing to add a couple more uh, goals that um, are, are included in our long range transportation plan. Next slide, please. So um, the updated criteria um, includes topic areas or goals of multimodal options, system connectivity, health and environmental sustainability, and safety. The multimodal option and system connectivity, as you saw, ties back to our, um, our existing scoring criteria. The health and environmental sustainability and safety are uh, new 
topic areas or goals that we're proposing to add to the to the scoring uh, criteria. Additionally, uh, we are also providing an uh, option for safe routes to school projects to be able to get additional scores. And this is essentially a, a way to incentivize and encourage communities to apply for safe routes to school projects um, to utilize TAP grants if, a grant if they do have uh, that kind of a need in their community. So this um, scoring process has, uh, or update, has gone through uh, several rounds of um, review and updates. Uh, we first shared this with the Bike Bed Roundtable last month and uh, received uh, comments and feedback from them. Mm -hmm. That went through uh, uh, an update and was presented to the Planning and Engineering Subcommittee. We received uh, feedback from them. It was updated one, one more time and presented to the, to the Funding uh, Subcommittee that uh, reviewed it and recommended approval as well. Next slide, please. So the, um, uh, now moving on to the actual um, scoring table itself, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, how the scoring allocation works here. So the, uh, the first two topic areas, multimodal transportation and system connectivity have um, about 25% points each and um, are very closely connected to the current scoring criteria that we have. The only addition would be under the system connectivity section where we've added the safe routes to school um, a, a criteria. And the other two, the health and environmental sustainability would be a new topic area and it, it, it includes cri uh, scoring criteria within it for projects that uh, benefit environmental justice areas to be able to get um, additional points, as well as uh, projects that incorporate stormwater and green design principles. Finally, uh, safety, we received uh, feedback from our planning and engineering subcommittee uh, to uh, to improve the section on safety. Currently, even though projects are, are, um, are considered for safety, it is not explicitly uh, laid out in our scoring criteria and we wanted to make that a little bit more explicit. And so projects that do incorporate systemic safety countermeasures or if they are located in high crash locations, such as intersections or corridors, which are experiencing higher bike bed crashes are able to get additional points. Um, similarly, projects are able to score on a graduated scale based on the type of facility that they're proposing. And in this case, uh, separated facilities such as um, separated trails and se separated bike lanes would be able to get uh, the most points uh, followed by other facilities as well, but may not be that uh, higher in, in terms of uh, the, the, the safety factor. Um, next uh, slide, please. Finally, uh, once we have, um, uh, we have finalized the scoring criteria, there's a couple other things that need to be done in order for the, the application packet, if you will, to be complete. We need to revise and update the TAP guidance document, which will include uh, guidance material for the, especially for the newer sections that we are proposing to add. We will also update the TAP application to match those scoring topics. Essentially, the application will remain the same, but we will be adding a few additional questions which will match those uh, new topic areas. Finally, we would uh, schedule informational workshop opportunity for potential applicants so that we can again go over the changes and provide an opportunity for them to ask us any questions that they might have. With that, if you have any questions about the proposed scoring criteria, I'll be happy to answer at this time. Percy, thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Uh, just a comment comment from Ruth. I just yep. want to I just want to say from the Long Range Transportation uh, Plan Committee, uh, it's really great to see the work on this, and I, I appreciate it. There are several on in the uh, meeting today that served on that committee, so it's good to see our work um, getting aligned with the future here. So yay! Thank you. Just a just an update for this was a voting item on the executive committee. Um, we decided to, to take it off as a voting item. So as us as elected can go back to our staff and show this to them and uh, get their feedback. 
and make sure that we're all on the same page. And, and Todd, that I would ask that uh, you take it back to the, the committees one more time, because I think uh, at least in, in our case, there were some questions that weren't answered. And so just just to make sure that everybody's on the same page and then we can we can look at it again from the uh, at the exec meeting. But I think the funding, the technical committee uh, should at least take another look at it and make sure that everybody's uh, everybody's good with this. All of us have got the information. We can give it to our staff and then we can move forward on it was the 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 gist that we've got from the executive committee and, and most of us that were on there that uh, last week I'll, I'll i'll move your recommendation joe and just add that uh, i agree with ruth i think this is all good and everybody's intent is um you know uh, a, a really strong benefit for the region i just i think that some of the statements and words are are vague and i want to make sure over time what our intent is remains and it isn't you know, gamed or, or misused. I would agree. Um, I, it's not a voting item, but Todd, do, do oh. we need to vote to have you take that back? Okay, you're on mute. Yep, sorry about that. No, uh, we, we got it. You don't need to vote on this item. No. Okay, thank you. Item number 11 is a report on the safe routes to school category for the TAP funding. Stop. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I'll give you an update on this again. Uh, uh, so uh, MPOs and RPAs can set aside TAP funds for Safe Routes to School projects. It's not something that uh, MPOs are explicitly required to do, but they can uh, choose to do it if that is a priority in their region. Um, the DOT also encourages MPOs and RPAs to award Safe Routes to School project by providing a, uh, a small financial incentive by matching 30% of the project cost through their sa state Safe Routes to School funds. So if projects um, are awarded by MPO for Safe Routes projects, they can apply to the states and they uh, need to meet their uh, eligibility requirements including that those projects are, should essentially be ready to go um, as soon as they are awarded. And, um, and with that, um, uh, projects are able to move forward with the MPO uh, funding 50%, the DOT funding 30%, and the rest of the 20% is, is the local match. So um, as, you, as you recalled with the last item, uh, we did include in the scoring criteria uh, some specific incentive in terms of um, points that projects can receive for Safe Routes to School project. And this sort of matches with what we are trying to do here. We are trying to encourage communities to apply for Safe Routes to uh, School projects through the TAP funding if they do have a need in their community. And so we uh, presented this uh, proposal to the to the funding sub subcommittee to see if we could set aside a, a percent of the TAP funding specifically for Safe Routes to School project. And the funding subcommittee recommended that we set aside 20% of the, of the TAP funding for Safe Routes to School project for this funding cycle and see how, to, how it goes. Uh, if for some reason we do not receive Safe Routes to School application or we decide that we are not going to fund any projects, then the money simply uh, rolls over to the general TAP fund and is awarded to other projects. Uh, so with that, if you have any questions about the proposal to, um, to set aside uh, safe routes projects for TAP through tra TAP funding, then I'll be happy to answer at this time. Thank you. Any questions? This was, this was also in the same category at the exec that we discussed it, we, we made it a non-voting item so everyone can get the information, take it back to their staff. And uh, Todd, I think that we should uh, have this go through the same process uh, one more time too before we take it to the full policy in the exec. Yeah, that was what we were planning to do. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number 12 is report uh, federal legislative agenda for the annual DC trip is uh, Dylan's gonna give us an update on that. Thank you. It's time of year again to start updating our list for the DC trip. Um, question came up, is there gonna be a DC trip next year? And we assume there will be, but we'll, we'll keep working under that, and under that assumption until we know otherwise. 
uh, but it's still a good idea to update our, our list. Um, so staff is reaching out to those who have put things on the list before. Um, basically, if there's something on the list, we're going to keep it on there unless we hear otherwise. So if something needs to change or something needs to be added, please let us know. And we've communicated this out to the technical committee members. Um, we have a December 11th deadline. And then once we have that list put together, we'll go through our normal process, which includes going to the STP funding subcommittee to just make sure that's fine. And then bringing that back through the various committees, tech, exec, and policy to sign off on that before it goes into any sort of uh, the partnerships materials. If there's any questions on that, be happy to take them. Thanks, Dylan. Any questions? Hopefully we'll have a trip in May. Item number 13 is a report on the integrated corridor management update from Thanks. Dylan. Yeah, just a quick update. Uh, last month, I believe it was, the Iowa DOT was here to talk about this project in a little more detail and just have a quick update on this. Um, just There's going to be a public input um, process, an online public input process starting probably the second week of November. Um, so be on the lookout for that and we'll help communicate that out. But we'd ask all the communities to also, you know, share that on your social media and websites and everything like that. Um, there's a couple working groups that are coming together and I think these were touched on last month too. Um, notices are going out to the communities, particularly technical staff that have been invited to participate on these. Um, a lot of the staff has been involved in this process over the last couple of years, so it shouldn't be new to them, but we're forming more formal technical committees, working groups to work through a few things here. So there's, um, and, and you'll see they're working through over about the next six months. Um, so there's a personal mobility committee that's working on areas of access, integration with public transit and so forth. Um, and one of the big things they're going to be working on probably is developing a traveler app. And this would be not unlike a Google or a Waze, but a little more in depth for and focused on our region that would help people identify better routes to take, um, different modes they could take, times of day and so forth to try to reduce traffic congestion. And on the back end, that data would be shared with people who manage the traffic system so they have a better sense of what's happening in real time. Um, there's also a green light committee that is being formed. This is going to look at uh, signal coordination. And again, this is so the DOT doesn't just make all the calls. They're working with the locals and everyone's making that on a, you know, in a coordinated regional fashion. And then a freeway solutions committee. And this is really more focused on the freeway system. Um, how do we make it, you know, safe, efficient, reliable, and so forth. Um, so those are the three committees that are being formed. Save the dates are going out. They'll be working over the next six months or so. And then we'll bring back, you know, the, the results of their efforts to this committee and others as we continue working on the ICM project. Dylan, thanks. Any questions? All right. Uh, item number 14 is uh, an update on the uh, transload facility. Todd. Yep, thank you. Um, real quick update. Not a lot has changed um, on the face. A lot of things happening behind the scenes. Um, we have a, a baseline performance report that was due in, uh, at the end of September that was submitted to Federal uh, Railroad Administration um, and they accepted that. Uh, community uh, quarterly report is due at the end of this month. It won't have a lot in it uh, since we haven't spent any funds and um, no activity on the site itself has taken place. A couple other plans have to be turned in uh, as well uh, later this year. Uh, uh, DBE plan uh, by November 1st, and then uh, a project plan and work budget um, by the end of the year. Uh, we've been working with Federal Highway and Des Moines Industrial on developing all those documents uh, to meet our requirements for the bill grant, and uh, everything's uh, moving forward. We had a, a coordinating call with them last week, and uh, things are progressing uh, fairly well, I believe. Des Moines Industrial is finishing acquiring uh, all the pro property and easements that they need uh, through this month and uh, we'll be good to go after that. I'm happy to answer any questions. Todd, thanks. Any questions? I hear none. Item, fi item 15 is a report on the uh, Purple Heart Highway update. Yeah, thank you. Um, HNTB, our consultant, it was uh, doing the uh, report update has finished that. They've incorporated the DOT comments into the report. Um, you can see on this table on the screen uh, from the previous report, we had nearly $36 million worth of costs that were potential costs that would be needed to convert the Purple Art Highway to an interstate. 
uh, due to a lot of uh, design criteria changes and, uh, and a few other things that has now dropped to around 3 million uh, significant savings. Uh, next screen. Uh, some of the next uh, steps um, is uh, a couple things on the DOT comments. They wanted us to look at the, the uh, farm gates. There's five farm gates along the corridor and, and identify their locations in a little more detail. That's been completed. Um, there's a little question about which design manual to, to take for this report. We've, we've got that worked out. Um, there's some right away needed um, potential needed for some rock road access points when you close those farm gates. Um, some of them are in existing easements. Uh, some would require some additional easements. And as I mentioned, some minor editing to the document. We're also planning on uh, uh, having a follow up discussion with Farm Bureau. Uh, they, they know this report is being updated, so we need to circle back with them on just kind of what the findings were. Um, I'm also uh, working to schedule a meeting with um, kind of the, the core group that's uh, from uh, exec and policy that's been working on this, uh, uh, Mary Krosky uh, and uh, uh, Stephanie Riva and Ruth Randleman. Uh, so we'll get that meeting together and then uh, bring back some recommendations uh, next month to exec and policy. Uh, next slide, please. And, just real quickly, uh, those red dots along the corridor are where there are fine, uh, farm gates. There's five of them, um, mostly on the east side. There's one on the south. So um, they provide some adjacent access to the property. Most of them don't look like they've been used in a long time. The grass is very high along those. Um, you can't even see the gates. So we're not sure that they're even being used much, but in case they are, we'll, we'll have to um, do some work on getting alternative access to those properties. We have to answer any questions. Todd, thanks. Any questions? All right, item 16 is a report on water trails. Todd. Yep, thank you. Um, not a lot to update you on other than the project continues to, to work on its original schedule. Um, got a number of core permits and documents uh, together over the past uh, couple months that allows environmental work to continue and, and uh, design work to continue on, on the core properties. Uh, the draft build grant agreement is being reviewed by the DOT and Federal Highway. Um, it's in the DC office right now for Federal Highway. Uh, the design team is working on getting their city 60% uh, plans completed uh, so the, the, that bid package can be reviewed by the DOT uh, later this year. Uh, we also had an agreement with the Corps of Engineers for the drilling program plan, uh, another requirement uh, of the Corps to, to uh, get into the river and, and do some, some work there. Next slide. Uh, just some milestones. Um, the draft CE, the, our environmental document, a categorical exclusion has been submitted to the DOT. Uh, there was one, two items that uh, we got some comments on and, and those have been uh, sent back up to the DOT. So I think we'll get that closed out pretty soon. I mentioned the preliminary design um, for the review. Um, and later, uh, early next year, we'll, we'll get the uh, check plans and then final plans um, done um, and submitted to the DOT by May uh, to meet our schedule. Be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Todd. Any questions? All right, item 17 is a report on legis uh, a legislative update from Dylan. Thank you. Um, appropriations bills were introduced in both houses, but have, have not been taken up really yet. Um, the big update to report you on is that uh, the FAST Act, which is the federal transportation bill, was set to expire at the end of this month. Um, in the continuing resolution that uh, everyone passed a couple weeks ago, that FAST Act got a one-year extension, so now it won't expire until um, September 30th of 2021. And the idea is that in the interim year, that'll give time for both chambers and, and everybody to come together and, and get a final bill out there. Um, both have introduced their versions of the appropriations bill. They just have not had a chance to get together on that. Um, I would note too, in the continuing resolution that was passed, that was only a 30, or I'm sorry, uh, it was till December 10th or so uh, for that continuing resolution, uh, just for the government overall. There was language built in that would allow an extra year for uh, some build grants. Um, this would affect the transload build grant, but it would not affect the water trails build grant or the new Polk County build grant. 
Um, in talking with our some of our congressional delegation, though, they said they were going to try to get that in, assuming there's going to have to be another continuing resolution when this one expires in December. They would work to get the newer build grants in there as well so that they have more time just in case, as Todd showed you, we're on schedule and everything, but just in case we um, need that extra year, they're going to work on that for us too. And that's all I have. Thanks, Dylan. Any questions? Item number 18 is report on up upcoming events. Gunner. Good afternoon, everyone. I know several of you were able to make the James Chum event last month. I wanted to let you know that that video is available to rewatch on the speaker series website. He was particularly good, uh, had some great messages for the region. In particular, uh, the importance of investing in the region itself coming out of a recession as a way of ensuring long-term resilience. Next slide. I want to draw your attention to the Iowa Trail Summit coming up, uh, promoting trail use after the pandemic. That's coming up on October 21st. This brought to us by the Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation. Also, the Street Collective is putting on an event about transportation equity uh, on the transportation equity panel. Um, Luis Montoya from DART uh, on our TTC committee, he will be on there as one of the panelists. That's coming up also later this month on October 22nd. And finally, also later this month is the iStorm 2020 conference. Um, they usually have two of these a year, I believe, and they're combining it into one large virtual event. And finally, uh, the future of law and transportation. This features many great keynote speakers, including the former Transportation Secretary LaHood, as well as Beth Osborne of Transportation for America, as well as one of them, our recent uh, Iowa University of Iowa speaker series speakers, Greg Schill, if you heard him talk, um, should be a really interesting conference there as well. And that's it for upcoming events. Let's have any questions for me. Any questions for Gunnar? Thank you. Item number 19 is other non-action items of interest to the committee. Todd, I think you have a couple, but if anyone else has anything. I'll take this one. I wanted to bring you to your attention that the Data Bike uh, won a Smart Cities Award. Um, and then also draw to your attention that as an awardee, we get, or also draw your attention that the conference itself, where the awards will be given, uh, are free to anyone who is a municipal employee or city leader. It's a $425 value. That coming up also on October 27th. And then next, uh, as part of the award that we got for the data bike, uh, we were asked to put together a, a video to showcase the project. Um, and this is, will be shown at the program later this month. Please let me know if you can't hear the audio on this. The data bike was born in central Iowa, which is home to more than 600 miles of paved trails. Trails provide quality of life amenities for residents, as well as tourism and economic development. As regional planners, we wanted data on the pavement conditions to help plan for long-term maintenance. Large vehicles are used to collect this data in the streets, but for the trails, we created the Iowa Data Bike, combining several emerging technologies. An e-bike helps maintain a constant rate of speed. An iPhone over the rear axle scores pavement conditions with an app. A GoPro camera takes snapshots along the way, and a 360 camera captures images for Google Street View. We are honored to be recognized with the Smart 50 Award and wish to thank you very much. The data bike was born in Central That's Iowa. It. Um, I, I would note on the free registration, there is trails. for municipal or elected trails officials, provide... there is a little bit of a uh, fine print there that says in order to get that, you have to commit to doing a one hour round table discussion with others. Um, so I just want to put that out there if anyone gets too excited and really wants to take us up on that. But if you have any questions, please feel to contact me and I'll help you through that too. Thanks Dylan, anything else? All right, our next meeting date is November 19th at four o'clock. And if no one has anything else, this means adjourn, everybody be safe and uh, have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.